Hello, this is Telecom TV. We are in London Docklands at Broadband World Forum 2016 and I'm talking with Amal Fadke, who is Managing Director at Accenture. Welcome, it's good to see you again. You have done a keynote here at Broadband World Forum yep. on the notion of migrating to a software-defined infrastructure. Now, that's a broad remit. What was the nub of the argument you were making in that presentation? Well, Martin, the, the key tenet of what I was describing really was the fact that there is three dimensions to look at in terms of unlocking the benefits of software-defined network. You know, there is a business dimension, there is a technology dimension, there is operations dimension. And we really believe that all three dimensions have to be addressed to really unlock the benefits of software-defined network. And that was, I think, the key principle behind the discussion. Well, let's look at that in a bit more depth then. I'm off. To begin with, I'm intrigued because which comes first? Um, do, you, do, do you look at the, the technology side to begin with and say, well, this is the base of anything we can do? Do you look at the business case and say, the business case is there, therefore can, we can apply the technology and then operationalize it? How does it work? How does the virtuous circle rotate? Very interesting point. Um, what comes first is almost a circuitous question because the technology dimension is where a lot of the energy is currently being spent. You know, a lot of investment, a lot of resources on evolving the technology, which is great, and we need to do that. But I believe there is a balanced approach required, which almost needs parallel investments in all three areas. So there is a business dimension, which talks about how do I actually create a new product set or a new catalog that is going to be fully software powered. And then you also have the technology platform, which is how do I create the platform of the future that can help you monetize those products and services. And then the operational dimension is also very critical because you need to have a real-time self-service layer that sits on top that lets you manage this new software-defined ecosystem. So really, to answer your question, I don't think there is a specific point you want to start on, but the key point here being don't focus on only one dimension, start looking at all three and start to move in parallel across all three. So this isn't a cookie cutter approach because your clients, your customers will <coughs> vary and differ according to what they're doing. Um, so it's not just, but do you have a, a, a base template approach to it and say, well, this is what we find under all normal circumstances, and then you add some bespoke pieces to it? Absolutely. So I think that's a great question. We've actually come up with a digital playbook, which is what we describe as at least a rough blueprint of how we believe a provider can go through these three dimensions of transformation. Now, obviously, as you said, there is a customization and there is specifics around the environment and how we have to condition around that environment. Mm -hmm. But the fact remains that a blueprint does exist and we are actually taking our clients through that blueprint. Um, now, the customizations are required because there are certain operators or providers who are incumbents in a particular geography and they have a separate set of challenges on maintaining what they have while rotating to the new. And on the other hand, you also have some challengers in this industry who don't necessarily have that incumbent base. And so they approach this problem in a very different way of saying, well, let us go aggressive on some of the business and the technology and the operational dimensions because we don't nearly need to spend that much time on rotating. So there are these cases which we have to cater to and we are doing that right now. But the blueprint really sets out how you would want to do it. That's what we have done. What you'd provide is, of course, consultancy services. Do you find that your clients come to you with similar problems, or maybe ostensibly similar problems, but each individual is very different in its execution for different reasons? And then, how do you manage that, and how do your clients manage that? So, uh, <clears throat> to address the first part of the question, clearly, there's an individual dimension to this. Mm. So typically, as you said, we would provide high-end consulting services, but the engagement wouldn't stop there. Typically what would happen is the engagement might start from a telco client saying, hey, why don't we create a business case and a roadmap and you help us shape it? So on the business transformation dimension. Mm -hmm. Some of the carriers are already past that and are deep into the technology evolution and then we help them build that ecosystem more from an integration standpoint that says there is a diverse multi-vendor ecosystem here. Let us help you create that ecosystem in a vendor agnostic way. And that becomes a little bit more technology consulting and a little bit more around what we want to do for the technology dimension. 
Some other clients, on the other hand, want us to focus more on the operational dimension because they are already covering the technology dimension themselves. And the operational dimension here, I really mean, is how do you save not just TCO, but create a customer experience and flexibility around that so that we are having an operations of the future mindset within the telco. And there our work tends to be a lot more around how can we create efficiencies, how can we bring robotics, how can we bring AI into the mix to really create this real-time operation. So it really depends on the problem we are being asked to solve and it could be all of them or it could be some of them depending on where the client is in their journey of transformation. Thank you. Because it is a journey and people are along different different ways along it, of yes. course, obviously. What about the thing that I've spoken to a lot of people about in over the past couple of years as network transformation has progressed, clarification and so on, is the immense cultural change that a software-defined network brings to an organisation. Does that impinge upon the advice you give and do you see that actually affecting the way the journey to transformation actually takes place itself because what a lot of the people I've spoken to said that by far and away the hardest thing is to engender the change of culture, psychological culture, management culture within an organization to enable it to become transformed. Good point, good point. So I think we definitely see culture shift as one of the key blocks of this transformation. Without doing that, frankly, none of the other dimensions I described would really work. You know? um, we don't see it as an impediment. We see it as a precursor to the right. transformation. Mm -hmm. In fact, a lot of our work is now on creating network academies of the future for our clients, where we actually take them through this whole skills uplift journey and the change of mindset and the change of skills. Because what you're really asking the service provider to do is to become a digital provider, which means as opposed to specializing in a specific vendor or a technology, you're asking them to have a consortium of skills alongside some software development skills and some DevOps skills thrown into it. And that really starts becoming a multi-dimension, multi-skilled individual as opposed to I'm a network engineer and I'm an operations engineer. Sure. And that does mean taking them through a very structured skill set transformation program, which is indeed something what we do even prior to embarking on the journey to software defined transformation in many cases. The final question to you, which is looking somewhat into the future, but one aspect that we've seen of, of technology, not, not the virtualization, but the actual physical infrastructure, we've seen a huge amount of investment all over the world in putting in fiber optic cable, which has a a lifetime of certainly a generation, 30 years or more, maybe even longer than that, is very, once it's in place, it's very, very easy to manage and control and to repair. Very different to the old wired networks of yore. Now, given that change, and given the fact that virtualization is coming and when it is applied and networks are transformed, I'm not saying you'll be out of work because there'll always be another area you can look into, but what effect do you think that is going to have on an industry that traditionally updated with a new switch or whatever yeah. it may be, every five years or so. Yeah. If anything, the way to monetize the enormous bandwidth capabilities of the fiber is through technologies like virtualization. Because fiber creates the backbone for a digital economy, as we heard from the keynotes today. That backbone then can fulfill the demand that we are seeing in the consumer and the enterprise space but only to the extent that technology sitting on top enables you to fulfill that demand. And in many cases, the bottleneck is actually not the fiber itself or the fiber per se. It's actually the technology sitting on top that lets you convert all of the digital information into the bits and bytes that a fiber sure. can transport. And by virtualizing that layer on top and r running carrier grade software on general purpose hardware lets you then at scale, fulfill the demand and fully utilize the investments you made in fiber. So fiber in my mind is a completely complementary view of how the transformation is going to happen. And if anything, the acceleration that virtualization will give will help to prove the investment in fiber by fulfilling that demand. 
really fascinating stuff. It's r astonishing to see it happening, especially with the, you know, the fact that NFE's come from nowhere to where it is in just over four years. It really is amazing. It's very, very interesting. So, Amal Fadke, thank you very much indeed. My pleasure, Martin. Thank you.